Welcome back to the Raisina Fireside Chats. I am Garima Mohan, a fellow with the German Marshall Fund of the United States, and I'm here today in conversation with Gabrielus Landsbergis, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Lithuania. It is an honor to have a chance to have this conversation with Minister today and discuss some of the challenges that the Indo-Pacific and Europe both face. Economic coercion from China is a well-established activity in the Indo-Pacific, but it is increasingly a challenge for Europeans as well. And Lithuania is at the forefront of dealing with this challenge. Uh, Minister, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'd like to ask you a couple of questions to explain this a little bit more. Uh, we've heard a lot in India about um, initiatives like 16 plus 1 and Central Eastern European countries, uh, partnerships with China. Do you think that perception is changing in the CEE? I think yes. Uh, I think that uh, the preconditions that led Lithuania to rethink our national position towards uh, uh, towards a format that was previously known as 17 plus 1 before we left it and our engagement with uh, with China and China's reaction to our to our steps made others also to fasten their uh, thinking about what their stance should be and I think that what we're seeing now with with Russia's attack on Ukraine also that that also provides a lot of food for thought in this, in this regard. Our position as a country who has uh, regained its independence just 30 years ago is, is very much about, uh, about independence and about the possibility to make independent foreign policy decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we've learned our lessons with Russia. Uh, we try to, as much as we can, to build our independence and not to build dependencies. On a, single, on a single country, be it when we're talking about energy supplies, be it on supply chains and all that. And the same thing we're tr now trying to do with when it comes to China. Mm -hmm. as, in, as many countries in Indo-Pacific, same goes for Europe, many countries are dependent, already dependent. And this becomes worrying. That means we have to start looking for ways how to diversify, how to diversify our supply chains, uh, trade, uh, trade connections, and this is what, uh, what Lithuania is, is doing, probably I would say leading the way, mm -hmm. and surely I think that many other countries in Central and Eastern Europe are thinking about doing as well. Wonderful, and I think your remarks would resonate a lot in India too, because strategic autonomy and reducing uh, dependence, particularly in critical supply chains, is, is a key goal here as well, and I think it's, um, it's remarkable to see how mirrored the conversations are in, in Europe and in capitals in the Indo-Pacific. Um, I think it's important to talk also about the Russia challenge that Europe is facing right now, and the response has been remarkable. The geopolitical commission of the EU really coming into action, um, and we've seen some big changes in terms of dealing with the Russia challenge through political, military, and economic instruments. Can you share a little bit about that, and also if Europe is also thinking about how to deal with China because that is going to be a similar big challenge down the line, particularly in terms of economic instruments. Absolutely. Um, and you, you've mentioned that, the political union and uh, countries like Lithuania were always asking this question. Uh, when the new commission was, was formed and uh, the president of the commission, Ursula von der Leyen, which was, who was just, just or still is here in, in New Delhi, uh, promised a geopolitical union. Uh, for us, living on the geopolitical fault line, uh, this is always a very, very important question, and we have these questions. So when? When we will start seeing uh, Europe to take on this, on this geopolitical mantle? Because there are so many regions and countries who actually expect Europe to act more decisively, mm -hmm. especially on those same uh, geopolitical fault lines on one or the other side and be it uh, in Eastern Partnership countries, all the way from, from Belarus to, uh, to Azerbaijan and Ar Armenia, in Northern Africa, in Sahel, in Indo-Pacific. And it is always a question that maybe, maybe tomorrow, and <laughs> when tomorrow would come, it was always the same, the same statement. And I'm thinking that uh, Russia's attack against Ukraine really has aw awakened uh, Europe's geopolitical, geopolitical spirit because it is already about us. Mm. It is about our values, it is about our, our way of life that is being challenged. And if, it, if we are allowed to be challenged, it will change forever. Mm. 
and then the decision has to be made whether do we, do we want it or not. And Europe is stepping up and, 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 and not allowing this rules-based international order to be, to be broken, uh, broken apart. And I'm really glad that, that it, is being, it is being done. Now, the question is, can it be applied elsewhere? Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that it can. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we're seeing uh, some uh, already active steps uh, in, in that regard. For example, um, a European Council President Charles Michel, you know, going on a diplomatic mission to, to Armenia and Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. then inviting the, you know, the Prime Minister and the President of the two countries to, to Brussels to engage with them, really to, uh, because the region is under a very heavy geopolitical pressure. Mm -hmm. And Europe can offer um, more, more space for diplomatic decision-making process mm -hmm. and uh, really be this um, a partner mm -hmm. in this, not, not a challenger of a geopolitical situation. And I, I believe, I truly believe that there are things that could be, that could be experienced, that could be applied in, in other, other regions uh, elsewhere. Now when we're talking about, about China, mm -hmm. I think that this geopolitical awakening is also applicable in our regard to, uh, to China. And we hear uh, certain political statements that, uh, that would really have surprised everybody globally a few years back, but now they come, from, for example, from uh, German foreign, foreign minister, uh, Minister Berbock, mm. who said that we've built so much dependency on Russia mm. that it's what we've become vulnerable because of it. It's limiting our decision-making process. Mm -hmm. It limits us from making, you know, stronger stands when it comes to, to Ukraine. We cannot make the same mistake when it comes to China. Yeah. So I think that this is really a very strategic shift that is, that is happening. Mm -hmm. And it's not against anything. It's more about securing, securing the, the interest of, of European Union. I'm very much supportive of that. Absolutely. That's, that's really helpful to us and I'm sure our audience as well. Uh, Minister, now that we are in New Delhi, what message do you have for your Indian uh, counterparts and interlocutors? Well, I think that the, the reality that we're seeing that is being born in the wake of, of Russia's attack in Ukraine is very much felt uh, when you're close to it. Mm -hmm. And Lithuania is very, very close to yes. it. We're basically on the, on the border with, uh, with, with Belarus, which is a part of, of the attack, and therefore we feel it very strongly that this is really a new world where we have to really take, take a side and decide of what, how do we want this world, this new reality to be shaped. The further you go, I think that this perception uh, is, is not, that, not that strong. Mm. But still, my message is that the world is different. Mm. It's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And we have to really to take a stand not necessarily about what you think about Russia, because our, our takes can be different, but about the rules-based uh, security or international order, even not about security. Mm -hmm. But how do we want it to be preserved? Because countries big and small depend on it very, very heavily. And I'm, I'm quite convinced that uh, without this stance, mm -hmm. without this defense of this, of this um, rules-based international order, basically we cannot expect safe and secure future, and I'm very hoping that we can all agree on, on that and, and do our best in securing it. Absolutely, and I think uh, President von der Leyen in her very moving um, address yesterday said that borders have to be accepted and spheres of influence rejected, be it in the Indo-Pacific or Europe. And I think that's, that connection is really useful to make uh, because as you said, when you're far away from the conflict, you don't understand it perhaps so well, but if you make parallels and connections to what is happening in our region here in, in, in India, I think it makes it easier for, for people to understand how, how to do that. Um, and finally, just thinking about you know, European partnerships with India, how more and more European countries are interested. I mean, it's tremendous, this rise in our dialogue, the sheer amount of European participation we are seeing. Um, in terms of political, economic ties with India, what would be your priority as Lithuania? Well, I think that uh, definitely we consider, uh, we consider India a like-minded country. And I think that one of the reasons why you see so much interest uh, in, in, in this forum is, one of, is the reason because you know, many, many consider India as a like-minded country. And also, from the political standpoint, we really we have to, there's a lot to talk about. 
uh, about this international uh, rules-based order and how do we secure it, how do we, what are the resemblances, as you mentioned, uh, between the, 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 the conflict um, in Ukraine and the, the possibility of conflicts in Indo-Pacific and basically the message that there are no longer any regional conflicts, so to say, mm -hmm. that they have global implications, mm -hmm. especially when the countries from the Security Council are in, in, involved. And from the economic standpoint as well, I think that a partnership can be strengthened because of the reasons that, I've, that we've discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. Because we've, we cannot no longer uh, work with the fact that we allow ourselves to build dependency on, on, on one country, on one supply chain route, on, or things like that. So we need more uh, trade, uh, trade partners. We need more partnerships. We need more agreements that would facilitate the trade. And I think that India is, uh, uh, is one of the most important partners for, for Europe in this regard. Great. Thank you very much. I think these are all my questions for today. Thank you so much for joining us for Rice in our Fireside Chats. And I'm sure our audience will really benefit from your points of view as, as I have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.